the road up there, a very busy main road, Blackpool. This is Blackpool Road. Yeah, Blackpool Lane it is, yeah. And the police have stressed about Blackpool Lane because there are hundreds of cars... 700 vehicles. Yeah, that, that would have passed through that morning. And so they are clear, they want to try and speak to every single one of those drivers to get as much dash cam footage as they possibly can to try and piece together uh, what exactly has gone on. So she would have crossed this road and would have walked down this path, which heads up to not only the bridge which she crossed, but in fact, the church which she would have passed, a church which has been a real focal point over the last three weeks for a lot of the, the community, for Nicola's family, when she's, uh, when, when they've come here to, to kind of, you know, just shine a bit of hope over what's happened over the last three weeks. Okay, so it's 16th century church, very beautiful building, just uh, walking past some of our, our colleagues also broadcasting um, from here. The reason it's so poignant today is that it's three weeks uh, today since um, she disappeared. Yep, three weeks today. Beautiful um, church. Is what she was, yeah, it's a really lovely church. I've been inside as well. It's really lovely. The vicar has spoken to us a couple of weeks ago, spoke of how this community is really in shock after what happened three weeks ago. And I actually met Nicola's sister inside this church just a couple of days ago. She was leaving a message on a tree that's inside there with the yellow love hearts, messages of hope for Nicola. And she would have come up here to this iron bridge, which again has been another real focal point of the last three weeks. Look at all these beautiful ribbons, daffodils that have been tied up with messages. Nicola's partner came down here, leaving a message on one of them as well. And as we just go a bit forward, we get to the other side of the bridge and essentially the start of the path which is next to the river. This is the path that runs along the river wire and it was 8.43 yeah. this time. This is when right she now, first hit this. So, you know, quite a pace she was walking at, isn't it? Yeah, it was, yeah, it was. We, we you know, walked and she's got a dog with her, probably the dog, you know, uh, running a bit ahead of her. You, you're a dog first walking time yourself. see the river wire there. Yeah, that's the river. You can see actually, you know, there is a bit of a flow to the river this morning. Um, but you know, this was all normal for Nicola. Yeah. You know, walking along this path, you know, the river to her right, the dog we scurrying off ahead of her. Dog off the lead by now. Yeah, that's, I mean, I, I'm not entirely sure whether the dog has still on the lead or, or off the lead, but certainly when she got to the fields a bit further up, the dog was definitely uh, off the lead. But this is, this is her normal walk, and this is, of course, this, this river bank which has been scoured by police, not only in the water, by divers, by specialist teams, but on the banks as well by forensic police officers. They've really investigated and thoroughly checked the banks and the water bed. Gone down the to the sea the and, well. and back again um, on several occasions yeah. with the scuba team. Yeah, there has been, look, you know, there's no denying, Kay, there's been a lot of resource pumped into this investigation over the last three weeks. Yeah. There has been, you know, a really high-tech equipment used as well to try and see if they can locate Nicola. Of course, their working hypothesis is that she did end up in this river. You can just see as we go around here look as well, here, Kay, actually, yeah, yeah. this is the weir. Yeah. Now, what the police say is that it is very likely that if Nicola was in the water, the force of the river could have, that the flow of the river could have sent her over that weir. And that's where you see the water picks up, the pace picks up, and she could uh, have gone further downstream. Mm, okay. But you know, this has also been a, a point where police have been launching their boats off here to try and get into some parts of the water to get near yeah. to some of the deep parts where they can do some of their diving and, and see if they can get any evidence. So just to clarify what's going on here, we are trying to walk at a pace that she would have been walking at. Yep. This is exactly what would have happened yep. three weeks um, ago. She's walked, she's dropped the kids off at school. Yep. She's walked along the Blackpool Lane there uh, and she's moved onto this path yep. that will take her to her normal route where she walks the dog Willow. Yeah. And look at this, you know, posters everywhere now. Yeah. Nicola's face is plastered over this village. Yeah. We saw this morning driving in 
you know, even miles out, missing posters, someone with some evidence who may have been driving that Friday morning. Do you know where Nicola is? Did you see anything? Did you see her entering the path? Did you see her leaving the path? Was that a possibility? Yeah. But now well, we're just walking yeah. into a, a path which basically takes us to where we've been broadcasting from this morning. Yeah, and the next juncture of where people last saw her. Yes, exactly. You know, uh, we, we've seen already a number of dog walkers this morning. It is a, a busy dog walking area. Plenty of dog walkers um, almost every morning. I've been told, OK, that Friday morning, the 27th of January... Very cold. It was very cold, yeah. yeah. It was really cold. And slippy. Slippy because of the mud. And the ice. Yeah, and the ice. And there weren't as many dog walkers as there usually would have been right. that morning. I mean, if there were more, maybe we'd have more answers by now. You know, <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's a minute thing that the weather wasn't the greatest. It could have seen more people out on the footpaths walking their dogs. But, you know, we're heading to the fields now where Nicola was sighted. And there's a lower field knew. and an upper field, yeah? Yeah, so there's a, there's a lower field to our left as we get through this kissing gate. And, and this gate, actually, I think we have to mention because it will play an important role in when we talk a bit about what happened later on. We just get through it. It's a, yeah, so this gate. is what, I mean, this is uh, basically what we call a kissing gate, isn't it? So this could have been the dog was stuck this side so she it couldn't come if she went back this yeah. way. And that, the, the yes, let's come. Uh, the area that we just walked along, yep. that is where there's no CCTV. No. We go down this way? Yes, yeah, so Nicola would have come through the gate and she would have walked onto what is now the lower field. Just a big open space. I can imagine, it's not been confirmed, but I can imagine police uh, are suggesting that Nicola would have taken Willow off the lead here. Yeah, of course. And let her roam about. Yeah. You're a dog walker, you know, yeah. that's what would And then he'd have been off. Happen. She'd have been off, I keep yeah. saying here. Um, and we're going to get, get to the spot now where she was spotted by yeah. another dog walker. Yeah, that happened in a couple of minutes' time. So that was around 8.50. So we'll get to that shortly. So Because what she would have done is... And I've speak, spoken to dog walkers... Over the last three weeks I've been here, this is a normal route for all the locals, people who knew Nicola. Nicola herself, you can see actually, see the path worn there? Worn path, yeah. You know, it's, it's a worn path. People do this on the regular. And this is where she would have brought Willow as normal that morning. So what's striking me at the moment is that she had quite a lick on. So, you know, she, she wasn't sauntering. She, no. She wasn't like, um, alone with her thoughts. She was properly moving. Yeah, but I think there is also, given everything that's come out over the last few days, Kay, her family and her friends, and, and I think people in general who are watching this, will be thinking, what were Nicola's thoughts that Friday morning? Mm. How was she feeling? Mm. What was going through her mind? We know she was on a meeting call. We know she texted a friend, <laughs> all that kind of stuff. But yep. what was going through that mum of two's mind, particularly when just... Over two weeks before that morning, she had a visit from police because of concerns for welfare. Yeah, uh, it's we a big know question. that a medical team went to the home on the 17th yep. of January, and yep. they haven't told us anything more than that. But no. uh, we do know that the police have referred themselves to the complaints committee yeah. um, as a direct result of that um, yeah. moment. And if we just pause here, because before we get to the upper field, it was. Around this time, yep. roughly, about 8.50, that Nicola was then spotted by another dog walker. Yeah. Someone who knew her, uh, walking around the lower field with their dog as well. The two dogs actually interacted mm. before the other dog walker went off and took the river path, which we've just come down, and Nicola then carried on with her dog, Willow, and we wanted and to do on. we wanted to do this um, retracing of her steps today to <clears throat> illustrate to people at home, you know, what had happened. There's, 
you know, there's so much mm. intense interest on what has happened. She's the front page uh, picture on all the papers seemingly every day. And yet it, it's difficult to pace, uh, place things together yeah. until you sort of do this sort of walk, I suppose. Especially when you're in such a rural area. This, look, this is such a quaint village. Beautiful. A rural quaint village in a rural part of Lancashire. You know, it's hard to picture exactly what went on. And we've seen Nicola's face. You know, but what is the story behind Nicola Bully? What happened to her in that 10 minute window? And that's what hopefully we can paint an image of what led up to that this point. This is the upper field. Yes, yeah, so now we're heading into the upper field. This is, so she obviously had an interaction with the dog walker in the, in the lower field. And then she moved uh, here to the upper field. It actually just goes up this, this bank here and then we get into the upper field and that's where and she had a Nicola mind, usually walked. Yeah, she had a mind on work because we know that in a minute or two she would have uh, messaged her boss. Yeah, and I think that's a really important uh, piece. A bit muddy here. Yeah. Uh, it's a really important thing to notice, actually, that, you know, um, Nicola... Ooh, that was a steep Be lap. careful. Nicola yeah. was, um, you know, thinking about work. You yeah. know, she was thinking about work. And the police have gathered that from the evidence of her phone. Her phone, which was left on the bench, still unlocked. Yeah. You know, they will have forensically examined that. Um, and they will have seen that, OK, she sent emails, she sent texts. It was in a couple of minutes' time, actually, that she would have been texting and, or emailing and walking. And on the left... You can see the river wire. So next her pace to us as well. has slowed a bit because she's texting and emailing. And well, you'd think, you know, yeah. you'd think keeping an eye on Willow, yeah. you know, just having chatted to a friend, thinking about what she's emailing to her boss. Yeah. Is this the rock wire as well? This is, yeah, this is all so the river around, wire. So yeah. yeah. Okay. It, so that's the, the, where it kind of meanders round yeah. and then heads uh, downstream. But look, a vast open field. Yeah. Again, a trodden path. Yeah. Obviously worn, as dog users usually would use. We've seen some this morning taking this route yeah. as well. And so she, very shortly, she would have just been finishing her email off, which goes to her boss. Yeah. And, um, and so she's looking at the dog. She's making sure the dog's all right. Yeah. You know, from my own experience, you keep an eye on them, but you're doing other things as well. The sheep across the way there, just obviously keeping an eye on what's going on. And then she sends the email. Yep. At 8.53, police say, yeah. right now, three weeks ago, Nicola hit send. Yep. And an email was sent to her boss. Yeah. And police basically say that, you know, that's an important juncture because we can get a sense that, yes, she was active, she was on her phone. And she was essentially, you know, if you're emailing your boss, you're in a fairly decent frame of mind. Yeah. You know, that email didn't suggest anything otherwise. It was a standard work email. Yeah. And so that's an important piece in this route. So she would have carried on here, you know, with Willow, email sent, maybe phone back in the pocket. Maybe Actually, one thing we have noticed, Kay, is Nicola and friends have told us this. Nicola used to take so many photos when she was out walking. Right. You know, her family shared photos with her, with Willow of, uh, of her uh, to us. You know, so many photos when she'd be out walking, she'd have a Fitbit on. Mm -hmm. Although which that would track wasn't her synced steps. up, was it? No, that wasn't yeah, synced up, police said. Yeah, so that said. would have been very useful for the police, but it hadn't been synced up for a few days. Yeah, and, and now actually... Now she's thinking about doing a Teams call. Well, yeah, a Teams call would have started at around uh, nine o'clock, so in about six minutes' time, yeah. so... So she's thinking about it, it's a work team's call, and she's thinking, OK, I need to go on that call for nine o'clock. Yeah. Meantime, walking by the river yeah. with the dog, potentially taking photographs. I don't think she took any that day, did no. she? And bitterly cold as well. Remember, yeah. you know, Nicola was well kind of padded up with her clothing. She had a, a full-length black kind of padded jacket on. She had wellies on. She had socks, a hat, a scarf. And, you know, she was well wrapped up because it was bitterly cold that morning and muddy yeah. like it is right now. And, you know, we can see kind of holes and big kind of divots in the ground. But, again, she was used to all this. She did it almost every morning. She was used to it. There was nothing out of the ordinary for her whatsoever. The last images we've seen of her are uh, getting in the car, yeah. aren't they? It's a bit windy, forgive me. Hopefully you can still hear us. Um, getting in the car with the kids. Yeah. And the dog. Yeah. And that was from the 
the security at home. Yeah, it was from the front camera yeah. at home. And actually, you know, it was released, it was handed to us by some of Nicola's uh, friends. You know, they were like, look, this is what she looked like on that morning. Grainy images, but we, you know, we want to share these so people can jog their memories and get an understanding of where she was, what she was doing, what she looked like. And, you know, those were the last images we've seen of Nicola on that Friday morning, loading the car as she normally would and, and starting her journey to head to the school. Yeah, we know that the family are watching us this morning. Yeah. It's so difficult for them. Look, I mean, I've been in touch with this family for the last three weeks. I interviewed them, the, the, you know, her sister Louise, her, her father Ernie, her mum Dot. It was, it was really, really tough because they were just clueless with, you know, no answers, no evidence, no idea where their sister, daughter, a mum, a partner has gone to. You know, I think the words that they used with me, Kay, was that it feels like she's vanished into thin air. That's what they've said. And, you know, because there's that 10 minute window which no one's got any clue what happened to her. And the family, you know, have had to be incredibly strong over the last three weeks because this is a case that we've seen has taken so many twists and turns. It's had involvement from, you know, every Tom, Dick and Harry you know, on social media, people trying to be involved in being armchair detectives. Such a shame that the family is so impacted by that, you know. Um, social media, yeah. it, can, it can be such a, uh, a poisonous place to be. I'm so sorry that they are impacted so badly. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, you know, and, and they, have been, they have been wonderful with us as well, you know, giving us information about Nicola and telling us exactly, you know, what kind of a woman she really was. But look, here, we're heading now on the path which essentially leads towards the bench. So if we maybe slow down here a bit, maybe we've been walking slightly So quicker. she would she would have been but looking at, you know, she she, things, what was yeah. the team's call about? That so, starts in a couple of minutes, doesn't yeah. it? What was it about? So this was a team's call that she would have then logged on to, a work team's call. The police have actually said that she wasn't speaking, she was just listening. And actually what they said is that while she was walking, she had her phone out in front of her, listening. That was apparently quite normal for Nicola to do. The call would have been on speaker, there would have been other people talking. Her camera was off? Her camera was off. OK. And um, it, was just, it was just logged on for her to listen, essentially, to what was going on in the call. And that's she a really finance, important... She was wasn't she? Yeah, she was a mortgage advisor. And her dad had actually told us just a few days before she went missing, you know, he was so chuffed because she just, you know, signed off a deal. She was incredibly happy. You know, she was in good spirits. And had anybody seen her here? Or there were the two sightings, just the other... So just to show you the other side of the field just there, that she'd walked up and then walked round in a big loop, if you will. Yeah, so just, just up on this side, yeah. um, someone actually did spot Nicola, a witness... Uh, spotted uh, Nicola with her dog, Willow. Uh, they actually then, police spoke to that witness to get more information. They, they put out a picture of the witness. They got in touch with the witness. They spoke to them uh, and they got some information from the witness just to piece together the timeline of what we're doing this morning. But, you know, this is, this is a, a, a vast area, as we can see. The lower field, the upper field, it's a normal move. She takes Willow all the way round and her walk would have carried on. You know, I think River it would have always, been... River always uh, one side or the other. Yeah, of, exactly. Uh, and, yeah. I, and I think, look, you know, you walk with your dogs, she would have taken it nice and easy. She just, just dropped the kids off to I mean, school. the banks are steep here. Um, it, has to be, it has to be said and they would have been slippy. But, it, you know, you would have thought um, most people would be able to get out of that unless there was some way where they were injured and couldn't. Yeah, doggy coming. Yeah. Um, and, you know, just to illustrate, you know, that this is where um, the dog walkers come yeah. um, all the time. Yeah. Um, her partner came along, Paul, um, and he's retraced these steps yeah. many times, yeah. hasn't he? Yeah, he has. He has. And he came down pretty much straight away. You know, he wanted to see... What was the scene like? What happened here straight away? Good morning. Morning, sir. Do come on fine. through. Do come How through. are you? No, no, not at all. Good to see you. You're living here. <laughs> well, <laughs> it has been like that. <laughs> so you, you actually, you saw the phone, is that right? Yeah. 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 You saw the phone that Friday morning. Yes. Yeah, and that was around, was it after half nine? I, I gave a full statement to the police yeah. with the exact time because, excuse me, because my wife's 
t telephone call had uh, a, 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 the time on it, so. Yeah. Yeah. But I've given a full statement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was yeah. it just on the bench, or? Pardon? Was it just on the bench? The phone? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. 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 How's, how's the last three weeks been? Each day something new comes out, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, uh... And, and in, in, in terms of, you know, when you saw phone lead and Willow, who you you knew who Nicola was. No, I didn't. Oh, you, you knew the Willow. That was it, wasn't it? You knew you I, knew what I, the I, you knew Willow. I knew I'd seen I'd seen um, both 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 the orders of Willow yeah. walking this dog in the past. But yeah. whilst I knew them by face, like I know your face, yes. I didn't know the name. Yeah, yeah. But, but you, I remember you actually telling me when you saw the phone that the lead and Willow, you were like. OK, I'm going to keep an eye on it, because something doesn't feel right. I, I, I thought somebody had gone to the toilet in the... Uh, uh, you know, that, that would have been... That was my, my first... Uh, I got to about this red brick building here, and I, uh, I thought, this, this is not right. Mm. And uh, but then there was a conversation, but my wife was trying to ring me, I was trying to ring her. Penny had rung my wife. Yeah. Um, to say that she'd, she'd fastened the dog up that was, that was... And Penny was the lady who actually spotted Willow That's initially right, yes. and saw the phone but didn't know what was going on with the That's phone. That's right, yes, yes. Yeah. And, and then after that, you know, what, what happened? Well, what were the it, next steps? It, then it was just a, a, a progression of, yeah. uh, of, of things happening, you know. We found out, because of the wallpaper on the phone, we found out who the couple were, then the school was contacted and Paul arrived. Yeah. Well, look, we'll, we'll let you carry on with your walk. I know you do this every morning. Yes. Nicola did this almost every morning as yeah, well. Probably, yeah. yeah, We're retracing those steps this time three weeks ago. Yeah. So, an important I know. I know. juncture. Thank <laughs> you very much. Take care. Take care. All the Thank best. You. Yeah. I mean, how important is that? Mm -hmm. You know, someone who. So he obviously one does of the that first walk people. about the same time every day, doesn't he? Yeah. yeah. And one, one of the first people who actually spotted, you know, the phone on the bench, who was contacted by the lady who saw it first, he came down here, he saw the wallpaper, he saw a picture yeah. of who was on there, and then they knew... Then they contacted the school, because yeah. they must have figured that the kids were at that school. Yeah, and that would have been the first contact, and then police would have been informed mm. and then the search operation and because begins. she was high risk they reacted quickly yeah that that was actually something that they that they said initially when they spoke to her partner paul they found out that he was high uh, that, she, that nicola was high risk uh, that she had specific vulnerabilities they then categorized her as high risk and then they're like okay and that's because of what had happened previously the police had been called hadn't they yeah it was 17 days before actually the 27th of January, so the 10th of January, police had gone round to Nicola and Paul's home uh, because they had reports of um, concerns for welfare. And so, look, straight away, when that is taken to an account, police said to me that that rings alarm bells, mm. you know, that really does ring alarm bells. And straight away, Nicola has categorised as high risk. Just and tell so us what happened when the police were called. Well, the details are, are, are limited, Kay, but what, what police have said, it was 10th of January, they received those calls, they went round with health professionals, they say, mm. medical professionals, um, not entirely sure what kind of triage team that is, but they go to the house, no one was arrested at the time on these, you know, concerns for welfare, but what they have said is that they are continuing to investigate what happened on that day, 17 days before Nicola went missing. Um, I'm just looking around as, as you're chatting to me, and I just look, I, you know, it, there's nothing about this space that makes you think that um, someone would have disappeared here. And I think that's the real shock to this community and to, you know, people like Ron the dog walker that yeah. we just spoke to. A real shock. How on earth has, you know, the nation's eyes descended on this small, quaint village in Lancashire after a missing mum of two? You know, how has that happened? How is that even possible? And it's still, you know, three weeks on, no clues, no evidence. There was a whopping question mark over what on earth happened three weeks ago this morning. <coughs> Excuse me. So she's walking. It's slippy. It would have been slippy when yeah, she was slippy. here. She was in wellies as well. Yeah, which would have been tricky yeah. to walk in. Um, 
She's done the loop, she's done the lower field, she's done the upper field. Uh, she's spoken to the boss, she sent, oh, she sent an email to her boss. Yeah. She's still got her phone in front of her. Still on the team's call. Well, this is, it's in this time now, between 9.10 of the, the witness spotting Nicola and moving to the bench. It's this 10 minute window where police, the words from police are, her phone moved towards the bench area. So how, how did it travel to the bench area? That's a big question. We still yeah. don't exactly know Let's that. Go this way. And then this is the river bank. We wander down this way. So this is the bank. A lot of people have been asking about the bank and how steep it is. Mm. Doesn't look that steep, does it? No, it doesn't uh, in some areas, but if <laughs> all the way to the bank, no, it doesn't. But then if you look further down, Kay, there is a bit of a Can drop. We have a, are you comfortable going down there? There is a bit of a drop down there. And look, it's muddy. So please be very careful, it's muddy and slippy and it would have been probably even muddier at the time. A lot of people have trampled on here in the three weeks since Nicola's been missing. A lot of people have gone down to peep over the bank and see if they can spot anything. Police have been yes. down here as well. It is slippy, you know, yeah. Police have also, you know, with divers and, and, um, and, and drones and underwater cameras have all been down here but clearly a, a bit of a, a drop off from the bank down there. So if we move back up. Yeah, and to, this, is, this is the part of the river where the police think that she has gone into the water. There's no sign here at all of, um, you know, any scuffs or whatever, yeah. but this is where her phone is found. Yeah, well, look, it's 9.20 yeah. right now. Yeah. 9.20, three weeks ago, Nicola's phone had moved to this bench. And this is what police say. It was here that her phone had ended up. I'm not entirely sure exactly where it was placed, but her phone was on a bench yeah. here. And that's where, that's where the team calls. It was still ongoing, by the way. It was on speaker. She hadn't spoken in it. She hadn't got her camera on but the phone was on the bench here. Mm. And then the dog walker that we just saw, did you say his name was Ron? Yes, Ron, but I mean, that, that, come, that comes later on actually, because Ron was, you know, uh, he was one of the first people to notice what had, uh, what had gone over here in terms of the phone, the lead and, and, and the dog. There was actually a, a, another lady who owns a caravan park here. She was the first person to notice Willow scurrying between the bench uh, and uh, and the kissing gate just there, but it was 9:20. So around this time, the phone the, the phone still on speaker. The team's call still going. A, a team's call with her her work. She was a mortgage advisor. She just you know got got a deal, a mortgage deal, just a few days ago. Her parents told her she was you know in good spirits about work. She sent an email to her boss earlier that morning, and. You know, this is where she ended up. Well, this is where the phone ended up, is what police This has never have been said. cordoned off. No, and, you know, look, that, that's a really big talking point and has been a, a huge Why talking point. Why was it not point. cordoned off? There's lots of questions around that. Straight away, police said that she was high risk, that she was a missing person. So there are big questions as to whether, why, there, weren't, there, weren't, there wasn't a cordon around here. You know, there was, there was huge questions because it, it, it enabled people, and we've seen dozens and dozens and dozens of people, to come here, sit on the bench, walk down to the bank, you know, and, and trample, uh, trample over essentially evidence. Let's just talk about this because this is the, this is the spot, isn't it? Um, the police think she's gone into the water there. They have uh, looked, searched this river, um, beneath, they've had divers, they've had all sorts of people here to try to find out what's gone on. They think that she is in the water. Her partner and the family think that that is not what she would have done. She just would not have gone into the water. Her phone's here, the dog is running around, mm. um, but, um, I know there's a gentleman standing there, but I just wanted to illustrate the kissing gate being just there. There we go, he's just moved it off. Um, kissing gate's there. That stretch there that we walked down about 40 minutes ago yeah. doesn't have any CCTV. 
No, it doesn't. So what happened in this 10 minutes? This is the big question. This is the vital 10 minutes that we're in right now that police are trying to understand what happened from 9.20 when Nicola's phone ended up at this bench, still logged into that team's call, to 9.30 when that team's call ended but Nicola stayed logged in. That, that, that is a real crucial 10 minute window that police are trying to establish. What could have happened? Right, what, what are the options? Nicola, as police believe, could have ended up in the river wire. How she got there is the big question. Why she went in there is the other big question. Nicola, the other hypothesis, working hypothesis, that police are keeping an open mind to, they tell us, that, but believe did not happen. There could have been some third party involvement, some criminality. They don't think a crime's... A they don't think so, no. but it's a hypothesis that they have to you know, keep, keep on their radar yeah. and yeah. keep investigating. The third option is, as you mentioned, Nicola could have gone through the kissing gate, down the path, the river path, and out uh, next to Blackpool Lane. If she turned right, CCTV camera would have spotted her. So police are clear she did not go out that path onto that busy road and turn right. If she turned left, however, Which there is... Which was back to the car. Yes, towards the church mm. uh, and towards the school. There is no CCTV yet that they've established or dash cam footage that has spotted her. So that is also a, a bit of a blind spot at the minute for police. So there are two kind of hypotheses that they are working on. One is the main one, that she ended up in the river. The other one is that potential blind spot of if she turned left when coming out uh, of the river path. But another thing police have always said throughout all this, they believe that Nicola did not leave this area, that she did not leave the fields. That is why they are working on that main hypothesis that she ended up into what is a cold, a very deep, and in some parts, a very fast flowing river. Um, I, I just can't get over the setting, really, mm. and the fact that a crime could have potentially have been committed here. And I can't, I can't comprehend that a dog owner would leave the dog here and walk up that path. Yeah, I mean, we, we've, heard, we've heard a lot of different, you know, arguments and ideas and people even telling us this morning in the programme that if Nicola had gone in the water, the dog probably would have followed. This is, the dog, this is a dog that swims. We've actually seen images of Willow, the dog, um, wet and in water before so we know that the dog wouldn't have been afraid to go just into to the say water. we're just seeing ron go now and we, yeah. we saw where we picked him up so it gives you an idea that it's actually it's quite a short loop here yeah. isn't it yeah it's quite it is quite a short loop i mean i think ron's joined us straight down the path and come yeah come back up i mean but nicola's you know walk around wasn't that you know that that long no. uh, it wasn't a, it wasn't a huge distance but again, it comes back to the question, what was her frame of mind that morning, Kay? What was she feeling? What was she thinking? I'm sure all that kind of stuff, you know, uh, uh, kind of uh, affects the way you walk, the way that, that you are in a morning. You know, was she walking quickly? Clearly not, because it's taken a long time. She was taking her time, sending an emails on a Teams call. That Teams call still ongoing right now, this time, three Until weeks 9 ago. Until 9.30. Um, the police have debunked some of the... Um, ridiculous rumours um, about the fishermen covering their faces and um, there was a van that they wanted to talk about. But they do want more CCTV, 700 vehicles so far? Yeah, it's dash cam footage, yeah. which is vital. You're right, you know, look, there's been so many different theories and police coming out uh, on uh, the 14th of Feb with the assistant chief constable, with the senior investigating officer for the first time uh, in this case, we saw her and they were adamant they, that wanted dis, to dispel a lot of those theories from people, namely, you know, who hadn't come down to the scene. And that was a, a, a clear aim for them on the 14th. They came out in force and they wanted to dispel those theories. I think they did that. I think that's fair to say. And it drew people back to, right, what is their main working hypothesis now? But obviously in that press conference as well, we heard, you know, the, the kind of shock bombshell really that Nicola you know, had specific vulnerabilities and that she you know, was high risk yeah. that morning. And the Home Secretary wants Lancashire Police to explain why they've talked about alcoholism uh, or um, uh, 
misuse of alcohol, shall we say, and also uh, the menopause, what's that got to do with it? Yeah. Um, so from when we arrived here, um, we were telling you about the phone on the bench, yeah. which was about 10 past nine. It so was about, about, about 20 past nine, 20 the phone past arrived nine. So the there's bench. like, there's 10 minutes now. So yeah. the 10 minutes we've been standing here, something has happened. And that's the big question. And that's the 10 minutes Look, where she's disappeared. You know, that is what police are trying to identify. Her phone was on the bench. Did Nikki sit on the bench? Did she take some time out, sat on the bench? Was her dog Willow roaming around? You know, was he near the, the water's edge? You know, did he go towards the bank? Was he having a look over in the water? Nikki's phone was placed on the bench. She was still listening to that team's call. But what happened in that 10 minutes? But we don't know if she was there. Mm. That is the big question. The phone was there. Yeah. Police are adamant the phone was there, but where was Nikki? Where was Nicola Bully in that 10 minutes three weeks ago today? And that's a question that police are really just trying to answer. But it's, you know, it's not as if this place is scattered with CCTV. We're in, you know, a big Such field a small area. next to a river. Such a small area. So, Ron, who we just ch um, chatted to, he saw the dog uh, running around. He saw the phone on the bench, and there was literally no sign whatsoever of Nicola. Um, he saw the screenshot on the front, the uh, wallpaper on the front of the phone, recognised them, went to the school, alerted the school, who got Paul, uh, her partner, yeah. who came down very quickly. And, and then the search began Yeah, and three weeks later. And essentially, you know, that, that search kicked into action straight mm. away by, by Lancashire Police, excuse me, and, you know, they, they really brought in a lot of specialists to try and search for Nicola Bully. It was my understanding that actually that search reduced over the last few days or so. But we're at a very important juncture right now, OK? It's 9.30, mm. uh, three been weeks a 30 on. 30-minute um, team call. That ended, yeah. <clears throat> she'd logged on about 9.01. It had obviously started at 9 o'clock. Yeah. Um, but she stayed logged on. So <clears throat> police say that the team's call ended 9.30. Mm. But Nicola's phone remained logged on to that team's call. In other words, she hadn't ended the call. Mm -hmm. It was still on there. The phone was on the bench. Where was Nicola? The phone was still unlocked. The phone was discovered then in two minutes time or so. But again, it was what had happened in that 10 minute window. The phone was here, but the, the call was logged on. No dog one had here. cut it off. Yeah. Yeah. And the dog was here as well. And um, as we said, the, the dog walker, Ron, who we spoke to, was one of the first here. He and was. And he knew who the phone belonged to. Yeah, so what actually happened then in the minutes after that team call ended, a nearby uh, resident who lives in the house just around the corner here. She was walking her dogs and had noticed Willow was scurrying between the bench here and the kissing gate. Mm -hmm. That's what this dog walk walker had noticed. What she then did, she actually got a bit of string, she told me, and tied Willow up to, to the, the leg of the bench yeah. Yeah. just to stop her running, running around. around yeah. She saw that the lead was on the, the harness it was, was on the floor. She noticed her phone was on the bench. She then contacted uh, some of her friends to try and understand what to do next. And then Ron, who we spoke to earlier, was the second person to come along and see absolutely everything that was left here. The phone, the lead, and Willow tied up to mm. the bench. And then that's when things really started to, to get into action because, yes, they noticed that the, the phone was still unlocked. Ron spoke to his he wife. He thought someone had gone to the loo, didn't he? Yeah, he actually said, oh, he thought someone had nipped off over there, gone to the loo, left the, left the dog, you know, tied up. And, yeah. But actually, when they saw on the lock screen of Nikki's phone, there was an image that clearly It was resonated. Nikki and Paul, wasn't it? Yes, there was an image of Nikki and, and her partner, Paul. That resonated. And then things kicked into action where they thought, OK, we better call the school because we know that Nikki's got kids there. And the school then picked it up from there, contacted the police, and the investigation started. Mm. So that happened um, three weeks ago right now. Yeah. 
approximately, police say it was 9.33, three weeks ago, that the lady who, who owns a caravan park just around the corner here actually spotted Nicola's phone, spotted Willow and spotted the harness. Uh, she was another dog walker, mm. so, you know, she, she noticed who Willow was, noticed who Willow belonged to, and then that's when things really kicked okay. into action. And so other locals got involved. Yeah, well. so that's like the, the 45 minutes <clears throat> from when she dropped the children off at school. We walk, we've walked her walk today, starting in the car park, uh, walking along Blackpool Lane, going past the 16th century parish church, very beautiful building, walking down... Um, to uh, where we are and then going around the loop, the lower field and then up uh, to the upper field sending uh, an email to her boss saying hello to people that she knew along the way uh, dialing into a Teams call just after it started at 9 o'clock making a way to where we are now, we know, well we know that her phone made its way to here yep. it was left on the bench, the dog was here the harness was here, yep. there was literally no further sign of Nicola and that has been the case for the last three weeks. It has been perplexing for Lancashire Police. It has been devastating for her family. We'll have continuing coverage here on Sky.